We're finally here, folks. We're at the one Kingdom Hearts game that completely changed how the franchise went going forward. The one that truly set us on the journey we would follow all the way up to the end of 3. And most importantly, the one that many, many fans, myself included, believe to be the best game in the franchise. Kingdom Hearts 2. Ooh boy, I cannot tell you how excited I am right now. I adore this game. It is easily one of my favorite games of all time. If you followed me for long enough, you know for a fact I dick ride this game hard. I have got so much good to talk about with it. Alongside with a bit of bad, of course. But without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty then, let's dive right in, shall we? How about we talk about the best part of this game? And that is, without a doubt, it's badass as hell combat. It's always been so incredibly fascinating to look at how much the battle system has changed since its humble beginnings in Kingdom Hearts 1. Whereas 1 and Chain of Memories had a slower, almost tactical feel to their combat, 2 instead chose to completely overhaul this in place of a far more of an emphasis on things like speed, style, and reaction time. And it gave every single fight in the game this incredible high octane intensity that got your blood pumping through almost every single encounter. As a result of this, Every fight feels more intense and interactive because of it. This new battle system was also accompanied by none other than the Reaction Command system, an additional mechanic that by pressing triangle at certain points in battle, you could have Sora launch an instant skill that aided you, and they had a multitude of uses. From redirecting damage to hit your enemies, to launching heavy damage style moves, to even interrupting boss attacks to deliver a counter to make them more vulnerable. It gives several fights a level of investment and feel of difference that you don't really see in many action RPGs. You know what I'm talking about. Those crazy ass moments of pure insanity and hype that leave your blood pumping and excitement and even a teeny little bit of arousal because you see Xemnas. Uh, ignore I said that. Anyways, it causes you to think about them for years on end. And 2 has several of those memorable moments that, while best represented in its boss fights, are also felt outside of them as well. One of the best examples being the famous Heartless War section, where after Sora fights through a vicious gauntlet of wave after wave of enemies by teaming up with various Final Fantasy characters, which is already pretty damn dope, I might add. But then, you get to it. An insane battle where you have to solo a thousand Heartless by yourself and utilize both your skills and the various reaction commands to achieve one of the most well-earned victories in RPGs. This is still a, such a dope ass moment. Just a moment where you're surrounded by all heartless, and Sora looks at Donald Goofy, Donald Goofy just gives thumbs up, and then Sora just goes like, yeah, bro, and they all charge in. Wait, now that I think about it, doesn't that technically mean Donald and Goofy each beat a thousand heartless by themselves? Man, how come you guys aren't always this helpful? Alrighty, that fanboying is done. Let's get back to this. This is, of course, helped by 2's camera not being complete asshole thanks to them overhauling it, so you always follow your intended target, which itself helps make the combat feel a lot more seamless and less of a mess, as you no longer have to worry about characters unlocking from you. Thank god, I almost punched a hole through my TV because of that. And of course, we can't talk about Kingdom Hearts 2's combat without bringing up its most iconic feature. And no, it wasn't the reaction commands. It is, of course, the Drive Forms. Special forms you unlocked throughout the game that, at the cost of one or two of your party members, outside of limit form, you gained access to new forms that greatly altered the gameplay. And each one was so damn unique and cool. Valor Form gave you much more of an emphasis on Keyblade combat, but sacrificed your use of magic, meaning you had to use items to heal Sora instead. On the other hand, Wisdom Form gave you long range combat and a boost to magic attacks, but sacrificed the damage you could deal out with Keyblade combos. Limit Form lets you actually keep your party members, like I stated before, and gave you access to several of your abilities and combos from the first game, but comes at the cost of using magic and all of the combos you've unlocked in 2. Master Form gave you an insane boost to magic, along with a massive boost to your aerial combos, but comes at the cost of both your party members. And the final form, which was actually a secret unlock you got, simply just known as Final Form, clever naming there, gave you all of that and more in comparison to the Master Form. And finally, there's Anti Form, a form that appears through constant overuse of the Drive Gauge, which possesses incredible attack power, but comes with losing magic usage 
and being unable to revert to your original form until the drive gauge reaches zero. And it also even depletes your entire drive gauge. It acts as quite a good punishment for abusing drive forms. The drive forms were such an amazing part of the gameplay that gave it such a sense of style that few games could match. But I've only been talking about the combat. How is everything else? Well, how about we continue with talking about the level design? I think it's pretty good. I love the aesthetic and style of the newer levels, along with the overhauls done to levels you've visited before. Some of the best examples are Agriba being fleshed out a lot more and redesigning the Cave of Wonders to not be total dickhole, Hollow Bastion into a fully explorable city, along with putting two whole worlds in it, and Olympus gains an entire underground section to explore. Even with the improvements to older worlds, that doesn't mean any of the newer worlds don't shine brightly, as a couple of these new worlds are easily some of the best the series has to offer. A couple personal favorites were Beast Castle, since I love the boss fights there, Timeless River on its amazing aesthetic alone, and of course the world that never was, being one of the coolest final levels in all of gaming. The levels are so varied and unique, but they aren't perfect, but that's for later. For now, let's move on to story. It's also very well done. You see, 2 is where all of the little information crumbs dropped in something like Chain of Memories and Final Mix 1 turn into the full course meal it was meant to be. Things like the organization you fight in Chain of Memories are now fully revealed to you. You learn Nomine's true origins, you finally figure out just who the hell that weird laser dude was in Hollow Bastion, and you find out what the hell Twilight Town is. And from there on, the story turns into this intense thrill ride that just grips you constantly. And while I still think that Kingdom Hearts 1 is a more emotional story, I believe 2 to be more exciting of a story, with a lot of fantastic twists and reveals that get you really intensified by the whole thing. That's not really how you say it, but I don't care. I think it sounds cool and we're keeping it. All of which is shown to you with some fantastic looking cutscenes and character models. It's honestly kind of impressive how 2 is able to remain timeless with its graphics. Really just shows what art style can do, I guess. And that's about it. Now, it's sadly time to call out its faults. Forgive me, KH2, but I do this out of love, not hate. Remember that. Alright, I'ma just rip the band-aid off nice and quick for this one. The level exploration in 2 is a massive downgrade in comparison to 1. Remember how in Kingdom Hearts 1, there were some platforming sections you had to do to get a chest, or maybe solve a small trinity symbol or a light puzzle to get it on lock? Yeah, that's not here in 2. Pretty much every single chest you can find is either just over there on a wall, or reachable through a single jump with little to no strings attached whatsoever. Which honestly kind of kills what made chest hunting so fun in the original Kingdom Hearts. This is of course also held back by levels now being far more linear. I usually don't complain too much about linear level design in games if everything else can back it up. And to its credit, Kingdom Hearts 2 has more than enough to back it up. But when you play 1 and then you go and play 2, you just realize how unnecessarily linear everything is. Which is honestly kind of a shame because these levels have a lot of potential to be better than the first games. Hell, I do think a few of them are better. It just sucks how boring it is they are to explore in comparison to ones. My theory on the whole thing is that in order to accommodate the faster, more stylish feel of combat, several levels were kind of forced to be more small and compact in order to keep things like frame rate susceptible and allow the graphics to look nicer. But as a result, it ends up making levels far, far less interesting to explore in comparison to one. Adding on to our little conversation about levels here, I also gotta point out that some of these levels that, while really cool, come with some massive flaws. Some examples I can pull off the top of my head are Pride Lands having a unique concept of how Sora be a lion, which I wonder is a reference to Sora's original beta design in one being more lion-like. If you've never seen it before, here's a small pick. I kinda like it, and I hope it does come up at some point in maybe four. It's a cool design, love to see it be used at some point. Anyways, back on topic. Yeah, the lion form is a cool idea, but you're forced to give up drive forms for it, limiting your combat in a pretty dissatisfying way. Atlantica getting rid of its awful combat was certainly a plus, don't get me wrong, but sticking you with some really awful sounding musical numbers instead, I can't really consider it the upgrade I was hoping for. Tacked onto this is also some really annoying story progression requirements if you want to beat the whole level, which is really stupid. 
Yeah, after I heard Under the Sea for the first time, I, I don't care enough to come back here, sorry. That was just too ass. And finally, Twilight Town. While being a cool idea to have you start off as Newcomer Roxas, and creates a pretty dope twist later on, makes the tutorial level go on for like an hour longer than it's needed. It's real frustrating to be honest, because the potential in all of these levels is really there. You can see it, but it's never super realized in these specific ones. Although, if I am being honest, you're really only going to notice these faults if you play the game more than once, like I did. Especially since Kingdom Hearts 2 is not super long. In fact, no Kingdom Hearts game is really all that long. Going through them multiple times makes them stand out a lot more, though. Other than that, I don't really have any other complaints. Kingdom Hearts 2 is just that well-made. Kingdom Hearts 2 is absolutely incredible, and even after going through it again and again over the years, it's still a gem that I adore and recommend to everyone who loves not only JRPGs, but video games in general. It may have some shortcomings, certainly, but it still to this day holds the title as one of the few games I consider perfect. My final rating for this game is my channel's first ever 10 out of 10. And that's the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor and like and sub down below. And if you want to chat, leave a comment as well. I've been loving the journey we've been on lately, and I can't wait for the next game. What's the next Kingdom Hearts game again? No, 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 no. Please, God, no, not again.